then do I know anything about these steps? So for example, if I split them into small groups, does it really help or it's better to them f uh, to work in pairs? Or if I let them to discuss their results and I stop the process there, is it okay? Or should I do something else? In order not only to make the tasks interesting and involving, but also to help them to raise their results measured in achievement tests. Whatever that achievement test is, it can be a competency-based test or applied tasks, whatever it is. So, and this is how I can introduce the topic of my work. Because what we are doing, focusing on physics and in broader sense on science, is that we would like to know what the literature says from the last, let's say, 20 years about these connections. What are those general pedagogies that can help not only raise general skills like collaboration and metacognitive skills and so on, but what are those uh, specific techniques or methods or approaches that also help raising achievement? Now, in order to ans uh, provide any answers to this question, we could do, I have two ideas in my mind. First, we could have an online platform that uh, runs um, self-learning service for students or a, self or a learning tool to teachers and we could provide a huge amount of data, big data, and we could analyze it and see what the data tells us and uh, generate indicators from the data. Uh, but we, we didn't have access to, to this. But still the problem would be is that how to, under, how to interpret those data. We should know something about education and pedagogy in order to understand the numbers and, and factors or whatever. So we chose the other approach. So we did a large scale systematic search and analysis of the existing empirical literature that operates most of the time effect sizes. We uh, processed more than, I mean, it's a representative sample of more than 16,000 uh, published articles in review journals, and not only articles, but these had to be meta levels. So it's not, a, it's not one article, but all of these articles are about saying something about the results of many other articles. So re systematic reviews, meta analysis, synthesis reviews, or something similar. Um, so I planned a 20 minutes presentation, so I need to skip some slides. <laughs> would, be too, would be too long. Okay, so at the moment, it's, uh, it's, in, the, it's uh, in the process of developing it, this indicator system. What, uh, what I could bravely say based on the literature, what we have analyzed already, is that there are at least eight main dimensions or aspects uh, from which we could, so this, this can be understood as groups of indicators, groups of variables. So for example, literature says that if you make students cooperate and collaborate in certain ways in classrooms, it doesn't only uh, help them to develop social skills, but if you do it in a certain way, then it helps them to improve their, their <laughs> their actual achievement in physics, okay? Effect size is a little bit more than 0 0.6. The same is with metacognitive skills. So this is, for example, like are you aware, is the student aware how he or she could get from A to B? How, what was the method that person used? Uh, the third one is the good old feedback, immediate feedback. It's not constructivist pedagogy, it's behavioristic, absolutely, but it still works. So feedback, formative evaluation, and assessment for learning, uh, you need to use it frequently and it's, again in certain ways. And then there are, uh, I would say, a mixture of uh, constructive learning uh, or discovery learning and a mixture of the behavioristic techniques, a certain mixture that works best according to the literature. And I circled these three because I would like to show some examples based on metacognitive skills, discovery learning, and knowledge transfer. Because I would like to show you how this indicator system can help anyone uh, in practice. 
what we use this indicator system for is to help curriculum developers or textbook developers or teacher's guide developers, content developers or, or teaching resource de developers to, to shape their materials in a way, it can be online or offline, in a way that best support effective learning. So let's say, it almost never happens, but let's say the teacher teaches by the book and the book, so what, what should the book look like? What should the book contain in order to support the probably most effective pedagogies in the classroom? And that's what the indicator gives information of. Okay, so I'm just emphasizing there is no direct connection between curriculum and the quality of teaching or textbook and the quality of teaching. But the question here is not the, what, what uh, happens in the classroom, but how these materials can best help uh, to go to the right or, or, the, or a desired direction. Right, so two examples. I'm gonna present two approaches, the list approach and the structure approach. The list approach is this is a list of indicators what we could look for uh, when we want, let's say, a textbook or a curriculum to help um, students learn scientific investigations. How should they do this? So it could include all these elements, basically. And referring back to Bell's presentation, discussion, uh, according to the literature, discussion is good, but it should go one step further when students start listening to others, remembering what other students found, and build it into their own work in the next circle. So do something or apply the knowledge, not uh, deriving from their own experience, but from what someone else's experience. That's a, an important step according to the literature. And the other approach is the structure of these elements. So Problem solving, let's say problem solving has at least two components. Who identifies the problem, the teacher or the textbook or the student? So is it independently identified or some ex externally identified? And the other aspect can be the method, the, the solution of the method of the solution. Is it chosen by the, someone else and given to the student or the student has to work it out? And the other aspect is how it builds on prior knowledge. If you want to make the student to be an active learner. And then you can find that according to the literature, this is the best combination. So if I want to involve the students as active learners, let's say I'm gonna look, in, look for problem solving plus prior knowledge centered tasks, but uh, more precisely, these three elements or some combinations of it. Um, dum, dum, dum. There are many experts working in this project. Um, this is one example to the list method. It's, uh, it was done on the Hungarian national curriculum, uh, which is under development. And we found that on some parts of the physics curriculum, knowledge transfer, so the good old methods like feedback and, and stuff, it's quite frequent, but uh, effective constructive learning, some elements are present, but some aren't included really, so it should be developed into that direction if we want to turn the curriculum to support constructivist learning. And metacognitive skills, yeah, it's there, but uh, the structure and the number of the aspects of metacognitive thinking should be improved. Time's over, thank you very much.